Hey everyone and welcome to the next edition of the Snapchat. I'm joined once again today by none other than Cozy Snap. Cozy, what is your favorite color combination for your shirts? Oh my gosh, this one, right? Isn't this ridiculous? I saw it's this a shirt. Beautiful shirt. I, was, I saw this, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And then I bought it. Uh, yeah, dude, this one's fun. I look like a, a, a person that uh, plays golf, but sucks. You know what I mean? Like a good golfer is probably not wearing this shirt. Yeah. Would you wear white shorts with it? Yeah, or something. Is it, yeah, you can't go like double atrocious. You got to just go with the the, the 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 top. Like, what is he? And then the bottom's like white. You know. We just had a fantastic conversation on your channel, Cozy. One that I think provided a lot of value for players at all stages of their conquest and Marvel snapping. What did we talk about? Dude, we talked about the conquest MVPs. It honestly was one of my favorite uh, discussions we've had because it felt like the the, the early days. Like we were just pumped. Hey. To like we had to cut ourselves short like there's so much to talk about uh so we talked about the best cards decks strategies uh galactus the nerf and all the buffs uh and nerfs that we saw from the official balance patch and then we talked about snapping and man that one is is very important to listen to uh, we got a lot out in a little time, but all of it is going to be very useful for Conquest. It was really exciting talking about Conquest, and uh, I mean, it's the new mode. I think it's really exciting, but I think that a major thing that we need to discuss today, and one of the major points of this podcast specifically today, is to discuss the bundles, the bugs, and the blunders. I gotta be honest with you, Cozy, this has been something that I think has been weighing on the minds of a lot of Marvel Snap players, including myself. And I think what we want to start with is the bundles. I think the bundles have been one of those things that have been very controversial in the community for good reason, for good reason. I think that uh, any feedback the second dinner gets is valuable. And sometimes I wonder if the feedback isn't being heard loud enough until finally it hits its breaking point. And I think that's where we've hit with this with this Darkhawk bundle. Now, to basically give you a quick preamble here, Darkhawk is without question one of the top cards in Marvel Snap. In fact, a friend of mine, Cozy Snap, once said that if you had bought Darkhawk on day one, it was probably the best 6,000 tokens you've ever spent. Now, this has been a great card, Cozy, and it still finds itself in many decks, but we have ourselves a bundle. And I think part of the problem is Darkhawk didn't get dropped down. Didn't get dropped down when it was expected to. So there's a couple things kind of colliding here. And then we have this monstrosity. Not quite a bird. Also, not quite a deal. Uh, there's a lot to talk about on this bundle and it's funny because i don't even know if it's like it is a lot to do with the bundle per se i think there's been worse ish but it's more about the, the some of the things that are going on around it uh and, and we've talked about this in the past alex it's actually that it's a lot of its uh timing and just presence right and just like what is shown uh, uh with something like this in general and, and the things around it right so i'm excited that we're going to talk about not only like the bundles but some of the bugs and things that have led up to a breaking point, uh, which I think we've gotten to before in like maybe the December area, right? Uh, but yeah, like I, I want this to be known. Uh, I've been called a second dinner employee. I've been blasted this week more than ever, guys. And, and I got to tell you, like, I, I, I appreciate the passion. I want your voice to be heard. I want you to be passionate. Uh, and, and I'm good with it. I really don't care. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, I, I, I hope they like me. If they don't like me, whatever. It's not a big deal. Uh, I, I just don't care. Uh, and I'm going to speak up to the things I need to speak up to uh, if it's something that bothers me. And I try to. I really do try to. When it comes to the not quite a bird deal, I think the biggest thing is it's not only the three times value. Like this was a miss. We know that big time. Like what? what is this doing here? It blows my mind. It's hilariously misplaced and, and just it's just terrible. Um, but it's also the things that led up to the event. And I've told them multiple times this was terrible. In fact, I, this was data mined. I, I messaged several times. You probably don't want to do this. You probably, this is probably a bad idea. Guys, I, this is things I say on the side all the time. Uh, and lo and behold, it launched. Darkhawk, guys, is not going to solve your meta problems. It's not going to make you hit infinite. But, but to hold them back, this is where the frustration comes. And this is what I get as well. To hold them back and then to have this as a timely, just so happens, uh, bundle uh, is the main core problem. Uh, the, the price, whatever, none of that bothers me. It's, it's what has happened around that. I'll be honest, dude. I don't think there's a second dinner employee that could, st that, that does is like, yeah, this was a good decision to launch this. That's the thing that I keep getting back to. Like, how, how does this happen? Because like, in some degree, like you're 100% right. The timing was terrible. The idea of holding back Darkhawk from the series drops and then having this package come out, which obviously could be seen as and interpreted as $29 or $30 American to essentially buy a meta relevant card before it drops, right? 
you have a ton of boosters in there which are not of significant value. You have a thousand credits in an avatar. You're literally almost paying $30 American for the card itself. Like realistically, that's pretty rough. I'm still kind of flabbergasted that this made it through because I don't think there's anybody. This couldn't have passed the sight test on anybody. This is one of those things where like, any anyone playing Marvel Snap could have told you. you. You look at it and they say, "Nah, this is a bad idea. It, it, it can't launch like this. It can't, it just can't because the optics of it are the optics of this are worse than Cyclops's eyes. Like that's how bad it is. Like it's just the optics are so bad. This sh it should have been scrapped. It just should have been scrapped. It comes down to the decisions of holding at that specific moment. Darkhawk announcing it right then and there at the patch. Then lo and behold. You can just buy the card and here's the thing i, I it's like you got to be all in with the like you can't pay for power stuff like this like i don't i want it to be known call me shill call me what you want to guys i i, I want it to be known like the kitty for free was insanely in awesome all right they dropped two cars in series four awesome and i could tow all the great stuff and it, you, like remember that happened you can't just bring up the bad things i get it you get a fly in your food the other food was good but this pissed you off like i understand that but this overshadows it because of what I just said, you could have had a good meal, but if there's a bug in the food, you're pissed at the restaurant, right? And so the three times, it's like, it's a culmination, man. It's a, it, it was a snowball uh, of a lot of things. If you look at Fortnite, which you can sh crap on the game all you want to, but if you look at Fortnite, they have, I, mean, I don't know, Anakin, Dragon Ball Z, all these different things, right? But all these costumes, at least from what I know, all these visuals cost the same currency. So we either need the same standard of uh, standard, like, you know, you can pay for cosmetics. That's fine. But they should all be around that same value. Or you get rid of what I always thought was kind of crazy to begin with. Uh, I remember when we first talked about the season pass review, I was like, wait a second. If you're not in pool three and you get this season pass, you got X card. I remember thinking that. And I was like, wow, that may not age well. I just don't love that you can, uh, that, that, that that's a thing. Because it does feel like something that they are monetizing and that buying, you know, buying a car. You got to be all in or all out there, Alex. This particular package, it really destroys, I think, the trust. The trust that a lot of the casual player base has. And it also destroys all the goodwill that this game has built over the last little while. That's my biggest concern, okay? When you make a mistake like this, when you release a product like this, what happens is it displaces the trust that you've earned. And something that a teacher a long time ago told me, I remember this, they said, trust is one of those things that's very difficult to build. And it's very easy to destroy. But the thing is, it's like they, it, the response is like, there's something bigger coming. And that's why I like started that conversation off with like, you can't though start with the bad and then like slip this in there too. And then do the good. Like even the silk thing, um, they, they, they ended up retracting it a bit, but like the weekend missions didn't happen. They gave everyone that bought silk a thousand tokens. Their reasoning behind that is like, this didn't affect you if you didn't get silk. But it's more of like, that's probably not a, you probably need to give more out to, to like, just, you, you don't want to like target the group that spins, right? Like that's just another disconnect of a visual. Um, You know, they put in uh who knows how many man hours into Nexus events. This was in the beta and it was essentially a loot box system. Uh, and they, they kind of toted it up to be events and something really cool. A feature came out, it was loot boxes riots on the street from the beta community like this is stupid everyone was like almost done with snap who knows how many man hours went into that they scrapped it like the next day or like two days after whatever it was they scrapped it. it's gone they, they they we made a mistake it's gone i just this is so much easier to do that with right and, and here's the thing i don't think this is like oh my god this is the biggest deal ever it's just kind of like i expect i'm i'm disappointed you know what i mean like it's like a dad to his son like i don't hate you i'm just like i expect better Whatever it did take to probably not launch this, it probably should have been done. The thing about this, I want to reiterate what you said as well. And uh, part of the, the reason why I tend to be a little more forgiving is honestly, I, I've, I've met the team, part of the, the team at Second mm. Dinner. I've met these people. They're wonderful people. They love their game. They're working extremely hard on the game. If you're someone out there that thinks that Second Dinner is intentionally sabotaging the thing that they're committing their last several years of their life to, you are way out to sea, okay? These people love their game and they want their game to be the best it can be. That's what kind of blows my mind. When I look at this package, I'm like, there's no way there's no way any employee you could have taken the custodian and said does this look like it's right and they would have said hell no <laughs> and it's not the cost it's not even the no. cost it's not even the cost though to me at least like that's just like another like i don't buy like a you know a, an expensive cup of co whatever right 
it's more of like it's it's the image of it all dude it's the it's the holding it back and then 100%. like here you go it, the, the card's not even like guys i'm rocks and hawks it's my thing man i forget i'm the dark hawk guy and it pisses me off because i like this is the card that i love and it's getting you know used like as bait almost right it's the image. I think PC launch is going to be very important for them to restructure things because you're not only a mobile game anymore. And they're going to probably, that's probably what this whole big picture is about. You know what I mean? They need to treat the monetization with the respect it deserves. Because right now, like I, even the collector bundle, like there's so, there's, there's so many question marks and like some, like we're going to get an arrow bundle, which is immense value. And the deltas, the deltas between the amount of value you're getting with these bundles is crazy. Even the like it, this was up at the same time as the Scorpion bundle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, which I got, just does. I'm the it biggest Dark Hawk fan, sense. and I got the Scorpion one. I didn't get the other one, uh, especially because of how good you know this was per se. But and again, that's where it comes down to like it's selling for the card itself, and I think that's one of the more core issues. And if you're gonna do that, it needs to be standardized, or else it looks like you're targeting one specific thing. Now for the fun stuff, and that's Spider Ham. Spider Ham is gonna be coming out this week, uh, actually tonight. Basically. Basically, it's coming out tonight, and uh, I'm of the opinion that Spider Ham's gonna absolutely slap. This card is by far my most anticipated release coming here uh, because it is gonna be a huge pain in the ass, Cozy. This card is gonna drive people nuts. I think this is gonna be the new big bad, the new villain everyone's been waiting for. You thought High Evolutionary was annoying? Well, get ready for Spider Ham. It's the new leech, the new leech, guys. People are gonna be going nuts over Spider Ham. Yeah, it's like, I, I, it's so funny. I think it was uh, a great point you had with like High Evo, where it's like, you could get so excited because the card's like, oh, this is going to be great against Galactus. And then you forget what it'll do back to you kind of thing. Uh, you know, ultimately, I like it. I Again, I it's, so, man, these cards are dangerous to release because they need to be there. Like the arrows, the shang Chi's, the Enchantress, but it doesn't take away. Even Ben Bro, I know we've said his name a billion. Even him on my interview, I said, what is your most, ho uh, most hated card? He's like, shang Chi. Didn't even take him a second. Like, People hate the, the tech cards. They're meant to be hated. Let's talk about Spider-Ham, Spider-Pig, and going straight to Series 4, which is also pretty nice as well. Uh, due to 1-1, that if you guys don't know, it changes your opponent's highest cost card into a pig that is virtually useless on ability, but it keeps the same power. Now, Alex, there's a lot of things to break down with this card. What are your initial thoughts? My initial thoughts is that it is fantastic. I think it's awesome. I think it's going to be a great turn 5 play. Uh, because it's more than likely that they're going to be having their turn six piece, right? If you play it on turn one, they might have not even drawn their uh, Magneto. They may not have even drawn their Galactus. They might not even draw on their piece that they're expecting to play. On turn five, you slide it in there in conjunction with, you know, your uh, whatever the hell else you want to play, then fine. Um, I actually think it's going to be awesome. And uh, it's going to be great in Conquest. I think it's a really fun control card. It's going to be infuriating to play against. And I actually think it raises the stock of Chavez a little bit. Because Chavez gets to dodge it. It destroys the stock of Doctor Doom. And um, I kind of wish it came out a little earlier. Because it would have maybe solved a little more of the Galactus hate. But uh, then again, Sail of V. It's a cool card to uh, uh, to counter. It's kind of like Wave, right, for Sarah. It's a cool card to counter a lot of the powerful decks. And I can promise you, the people that are going to hate this card the most are discard decks with Apocalypse. Galactus players. Probably Sarah, Miracle. Probably uh, Death. Oh my god, it's unplayable. Uh, the Hulk from high evo uh those are gonna hate that right it, obviously and th they're gonna be the loudest because it affects decks that they play but it helps those other decks to kind of be a bit better now i think we have confirmation we'll know by tonight that you can see the card that it hits which is also nice for intel uh, if you can't you can but if you can that's pretty awesome uh, and i like how they balanced it because if you bounce it back which i think it'll be played in bounce decks it it could hit the same card again so you don't get like this crazy effect i know it's a random selection so if they're playing ramp It'll, like, if it had a pig, it might hit another pig. Um, but you kind of said it well. I like it on the early turns for Intel. And if you hit their Apocalypse or whatever, you snap, dude. Like, we just talked about that on my uh, side. Uh, but the, on the other side, dude, it's the perfect curve out card. Like, right? Like, it's turn five. You're playing a Surfer deck. Like, man, I have leftover energy. I might as well just pop the pig, you know? It, it, I, that, it, it being one cost is wild. I think that it being one cost is so good because you're right. It's the perfect curve card. And it, it also has this universal appeal, which like it can kind of go anywhere. It can kind of be in any deck. Like it yep. doesn't, it doesn't have to, it feels like Iceman, except it's basically Iceman if Iceman was Leech, which I mean, this reason why Leech is the middle of the screen here. Also, this variant is offensive. However, I will tell you that like it is basically the Leech version of Iceman. 
and it, it I think it can have a huge impact on the meta. Like I actually think that this might be a card that's going to drive people insane. And I think it was really prudent to them to release it into Series 4 to give it more access to people. Funny enough, the, the previous tech cards have whiffed most of them. Uh, like Negasonic, whatever. All these cards that they, we thought would be better, they didn't really play out that well. Being a one-cost card, this is probably the card to get, man. This is a good card to get, guys. If you want my honest opinion, this is a good card to get that has a lot of versatility. What I like about it is the pig, from what we've learned, turns it into a no-ability card. So my man Patriot gets a little bit better. Which is great, man. I mean, yeah, it screws your uh, Ultron, but at least you get like a little a little something out of it. Uh, and I like that you do have agency to play it on any turn. And, and, and depending on the turns that you play it on, uh, you know, maybe they... Uh, maybe you know they're going to play MODOK, right? So they play MODOK. They have Pryo. Woof. They don't have Swarm, hopefully. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter if they have Swarm. And you know that you're hitting APOC. You know you're hitting it, right? So there's going to be ways to use this card strategically. This is a no question buy for me. Uh, I think this is a really good card that you're going to get your value for. And uh, I think people are going to regret it because this card is going to suck, man. It's gonna, people are going to hate this thing. It's People are going to hate it for sure. It's going to be so hated. But they should hate it. It's actually, it's going to change. It's going to change the landscape of, of like six cost cards, in my opinion. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. for instance, Magneto's value, I think actually goes up because it's a card that if it gets hit as a 612, like obviously the ability to, to affect multiple lanes, but it's still good. Giganto? All Does of it these. get better? Look at this little row. Yeah. This little row here is just like the row. If you're not watching, it's Magneto, Agatha, Gi oh, Agatha. Mm, it's her season. Giganto, Destroyer, and the Infinite. All of those, welcome. Welcome. Infinite just loves it, eh? But like, but then again, someone like Zola. Zola hates it. Like, what, what's Zola going to do? Yeah. Destroy decks, man. They're going to get rocked, uh, sadly. Death gets hit. You have an unplayable card. Zola gets hit. Null. There goes your combo. Null. Bye, dude. Like, oh man, leader somehow gets worse. Hella. Doom is a nightmare. Hella's a gonna suck too, dude. There's a lot of these that are gonna. I'm trying to think what's even like. If it gets hit, it's like okay, that's fine. I guess She Hulk who kind of just disappeared in the limelight. Uh, Orca. I mean, yeah, or okay, Orca still. Uh, yeah, Orca's Orca. Like realistically, I, I think Chavez is a winner here because I think Chavez yeah. is always gonna dodge it. But like, you don't. There's very rarely a time where you like. I want to play Chavez. And if you're playing Chavez in a discard list, it's because Apoc probably just got hit, right? Which sucks. And dude, the other thing is, like, we've seen it from history past, right? Outside of one outlier, uh, which some people would say too, because of Howard. Like, yeah, Snow Guard. Okay, I get it. Sucks. But like, Kitty Pride, uh, Nebula, we knew one cost card equal good, right? Because you have so many opportunities to play it. It has a lot of decks that it can fit into. Uh, dude, I think this will be the same. So closing thoughts here, Cozy. I'm going to let you go first. Smash or pass on Spider Ham. I think this is a card to buy this season. Probably the number one if you're looking for general play. Spider 299 is my favorite, but this is like the, this is probably the one uh, uh, to get. And uh, yeah, dude, it's, uh, I, I, here's the thing. If you don't buy it now, it's just going to hit you. Someone's going to hit you uh, with it a couple of times and buy the weekend missions to get some currency back. You're like, all right, I'm, 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 I've had enough. Smash. I see you smash that bacon. You got it. I think this card's damn good. I think it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, even if it's not that good, I mean, the flavor of it, everything's so good about it. Like, I, I love this card. I think it's going to be great. And I think you're right. People are going to hate it. This is going to be a top tweeted card. It's going to be like, I was holding this. Look what happened to this. It's basically a budget leech. Yeah. People are going to be pissed. People are going to be so pissed. I know, dude. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to get comments where I'm not dogging on the, the pig. Uh, at, maybe at most it goes like a two one. I don't know. We'll have to see, dude. We don't even know. We have no idea. It could suck, guys. Like it's probably not going to, but it, it, it it's it is gonna be uh, wild, especially if it gives Intel, dude, like Yandu. But Yandu destroys a card. This was something they actually had in their hand. So you're like ruining their hand draw. Like, dude, it's for one, uh, dude. When I saw one one, I, guys, I see cards way in advance through data mining because I do a lot of art stuff. I was like one one. I was like, oh, okay, well these are just like placeholder stats. And then it came out. I was like, oh well. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. But uh, speaking of, let's talk about some bad cards, Alex. And our favorite bad cards. And I love this, guys. I think it's always good to have one fun subject. And this is definitely the one for this Snapchat after a very serious one in, in, in Spider-Ham. Hit me with your favorite bad cards, dude. Yeah, I've been looking forward to having this conversation for a couple of weeks now. Because, like, honestly, I'm obsessed with playing garbage cards. I love when people are like, yo, this card sucks. Who would ever play it? And I'm like, I'm going to beat you with it. I'm going to get, the, like, Gold Conquest done with this absolute trash heap card to prove that maybe there is a little bit of merit. 
right there is a little bit of merit and the one that i recently did a video on and people were like like seriously alex really this this is the card that is going up to like 32 power wolfsbane wolfsbane yeah. i was playing wolfsbane in a wong going not a wong going sorry a wong on reveal list which by the way i'm telling you right now on reveal is Smacks. definitely being slept Smacks, on max dude oh my god no one's playing cosmo right now which blows my mind i am putting Bro up so much power with on reveal it's and oh i must I have gotten five right proven now. ground tickets just with black panther and Zola. i was like thank you you don't have the counter eight cubes goodbye like <laughs> yeah it's just and wolfsbane i love it i love wolfsbane so much because like when you drop odin on that wolfsbane oh chef's kiss just procs up it just goes so vertical so fast and the thing i love is it does something great like you can have wolfsbane okay you can have wong you can have wolfsbane okay almost play like you're a bot you play the wolfsbane by itself people are like bro like what is this right you play wong on top you play your white tiger then you play odin you're going wide and vertical at the same time yeah, yeah. like it's it's so good it's so good and people don't play it people do not play this card it's generally considered bad i love it dude i was playing this with uh some dazzler builds and this is one that i think marries perfectly with dazzler because what do you want with this card you want to fill it up we like told the, from the gods we're like oh my god maximus is the greatest card and dude this can get the three seven like that you know like obviously you can have three cards yeah brood one card or whatever like it, there's so many cards there's ways and with dazzler you're looking to fill up locations wolfsbane the same thing i think it's underplayed I think it's massively underplayed. Uh, dude, what a great start. I'm going to hit you with a car that sucks and is not near as good as Wolfsbane, but I think it's much <laughs> better than people uh, people think. And uh, you can uh, count on it because I already have the footage. Uh, multiple gold conquest wins with this one card because nobody sees it coming. We're going to stay here, baby. Negasonic. This card is Garbo. Uh, obviously, is what everybody says, but here's the thing. It's got a lot of synergy and destroy for a lot of reasons. Uh, you can use it for you and against the opponent. Do not play this thing on three. Do not play it up probably on four. Get the trade-off value. And right now with the meta, bro, oh my god. Like, discard. It's turn four. You know, they're playing Dragula. Throw it over to where you think they're going to play it. Uh, it. You throw it in. Uh, the, the, how I got my conquest wins gold was uh, the Hulk. Dude, the amount of times I traded this little 3-5. Three, 3-5. Five. Three, five, and I killed the Hulk. That, and, and the whole point of that deck is to win a lane, right? So I was like, uh, you, you get one lane and then you win just with the Hulk. I took it down. Uh, you guys will see the footage this week. Negasonic provided a lot of value. Uh, Destroy decks. I have Bucky Barnes. Throw it on top of there. Professor X. Guaranteed safety lane like rescue, uh, but a little bit better. Was watch out for the Wasps. Don't play too early. Killer card. It's funny because I remember with Negasonic, I bought it on release. I was so excited for it. And it is a card that has tremendous amount of potential. And it just feels like I was forcing it in the wrong ways. And then I felt like the more I played with it, the more I realized like, hell, this is a really good tech card. Especially and like there's even, dare I say, daredevil synergy with it. Yep. Like there's so much you can do with this card and it, it, it beats out like Cosmo. It goes through Cosmo. Like it is much more reliable than you would think it is. And um, it can be scary to play, like, you play it in, and, like, what's your opponent do? Like, a bounceless, maybe they can just feed something into it, right? But, I mean, what's a high evolutionary deck do? And that's why you hold on to it. But what's also crazy uh, with this is, like, when you play a destroy build, uh, a couple things to know. I've tested it, so you're safe not to. Venom eats it, doesn't blow up, guys. He's fine. He eats the power. It's just great power to get from Venom. But number two is, like, uh, Sabretooth, let's say. You throw him in there, just goodbye, good sweet son. You get yourself a free saber tooth, and you're building up your null. You're not wasting this card's power. You're giving it to another card. So, like, that's the whole mindset around it. Is it good in other decks? Probably not. But it's awesome in Conquest, especially with Destroy. So, what's your next card, dude? All right. For me, it's going to be Crystal. Now, this I know this is a hot take. People will be like, really, Alex? You like playing with Crystal? I do. Listen, it's... I still think the card sucks, honestly. I've been experimenting with it a lot. And in some decks, you're like, I, I just really need my Hella. Like, I, I don't care if they draw more yeah. cards. I always play with the mindset, Cozy. I don't know if you're the same. I just assume they always have their pieces. They always. they always have everything they need against me. That's the way I live my life playing Marvel Snap. For me, I almost never have my damn pieces. I don't have Ultron when I'm playing Ultron to the Patriot. Like, it just never shows up. There are games where I'm like, huh, I'm playing Discord. I'm like, did I forget to put Apocalypse in my deck? Right? And Crystal gives you that, that card draw. 
and like it's pretty crazy to think what one additional card can do it's basically the power of adam warlock without the annoyance of trying to play adam warlock yeah yes your opponent gets it but i actually think it's pretty valuable in some lists yeah combo combo decks love this baby uh if you get your hazmat it's done anyway right uh also like bounce is so popular their hands always full anyway dude so it's like they barely get a card and if they do they don't draw so it evens out or whatever like it's on a bonus uh the four four is what hurts but uh dude i yeah it, it's a bad card that has uses for sure i've been trying to work on a list i don't have anything to announce quite yet but keep it on the channel i've been working on a brew with uh with ronin uh which i think is pretty cool because you could use crystal in a ronin based list with uh with something like a um with master mold right with master mold i think that's actually pretty interesting uh you could either deny the draw or like you basically just draw them cards and use that to power your uh your ronin mystique play uh, later on in the game so i do think that crystal's kind of being slept on i would love if it was four or five i think four or five just come on Give me that OTA. Give me that OTA. We did the patch change. Give me the OTA now to four or five. It's where Rockslide is. And we know that Rockslide had an ascendance from garbage. And I think that Crystal could do it too. Yeah, dude, for sure. Uh, I will say uh, the next bad card, I'll stay in forecast. I got uh, this one and one other one. Uh, Omega Red, dude. Uh, bad card. Bad card. Not a good card. Uh, but in Conquest, not bad. He feels really good to complement decks that are trying to achieve the same thing that he's doing, uh, right? Which is why I put him in my um, uh, my surprise Ultron, right? Because I have Dazzler in there. Uh, I'm already building one lane tall. I've got uh, Ultron where I'm filling out the other lanes anyway, right? Uh, or a control deck. You're closing down with Storm. Y y you're, you're fine. That's okay because you have ways to get power to there. Dude, it's so damn hard to win by 10 power. It's so hard. Don't get me wrong. The card sucks. It's actually a card that I've always enjoyed playing, but you're right. It, it does kind of suck. I think that 10 power is way harder than it has to be. Uh, I traditionally played it in like Invisible Woman style lists, uh, but that was on ladder. In Conquest, like it's a surprise card that once the surprise is revealed, man, it's hard to like play that again. Like it's, it's not a surprise card that like really like Valkyrie, for instance, I feel like Valkyrie always has a play. Even once you, they yeah. know it's in your deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Omega red. It's like, bruh, you're playing Omega red now. Now I know, now I know what's up. Right. So it's like, it loses that value. So I think that's a good call, but it is so fun when you get that, just that right play, the Omega red onslaught, you're like, Oh, ho, ho, ho. it does feel super good. Um, and that brings me to my next card, a card that feels good, but honestly is just bad. It's just bad. And we're going to the two costs. For me, it's a Koye. I mean, I want to love this card. Whoa. I want to love this card. I know. Talk about a card you probably forgot existed. Um, a Koye is terrible. And anytime I make, like, I like I like value-based lists. I often try to make lists where, like, you're playing all six turns. You're playing as much power as you can. I think a Koye does wonders for Captain Marvel. Because that 5-7 uh, flying around is... Believe it or not, much more impactful than a 5-6. Could you believe it? Yes, I think you can. So Okoye is good. However, you don't draw on two, it's terrible. Like, it's just, it's one of the worst cards in the game to not draw on curve. Like, worse than Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah, if you play it off curve, still is bad, but you still get that payoff on turn five. Okoye feels disgusting. Disgusting on any turn other than, uh, than turn two. But it's kind of like a mental game, because realistically, like, if she if you play two cards that she buffs, is she not a 2-4? Yeah, so it is. Uh, I think Lockjaw can use her too. That was a hot thing for a while, but like being able to throw her as a token card for only two feels pretty good as well, right? Uh, now, she got worse after Lockjaw can only do one cycle because you obviously want to try to use other ones. But yeah, dude, I've tried to use her in decks like that really love the boost, like Deadpool or whatever, but it ends up there being another card. But I do get it. Like, she's fun uh and if you're gonna run her run nakia then you're running two bad cards it's like oh my god uh dude i like the pick uh i'm gonna go with my last card here and it's uh i don't think this is a shock some people might be like it's not even a bad card cozy i think kingpin dude i gotta always go back to him love him fun card man crazy he destroys an effing card like that multiple uh it it's wild you can do stuff on your side with him uh very strong especially with invisible woman's buff i feel like he's underplayed stegron magneto there's a lot of crazy things move decks are getting popular this guy's a new plate as well i actually had a deck with uh with kingpin on the board and i had heimdall and um ghost spider with nimrod and the idea oh, yeah. was is that you can actually heimdall the nimrod into your own kingpin or you can play ghost spider pull nimrod into the kingpin and then on with your remaining mana play venom on one of the other locations so he blows and then venom blows him again like it's like 
chef's kiss combo, but uh, I hate to say it, a little unreliable, one might say. Very it's nice. like, oh, I, I drew the perfect draw. I get to win this game, you know what I mean? Right. But um, I, I do love that pick as well. I mean, you've been going back to King I'm actually really upset you, you showcased that variant and not the Hawaiian shirt variant. How oh, dare dude, you? I love this one. And the How pirate dare, like, one, he's got all good ones, though, dude. They're all bangers. He's literally wearing your shirt in reverse. Like, go back to that. Oh, it's yeah. your shirt, opposite colors, oh, basically. Oh, man, dude, look at him. He is... He is Oh, there's forearms. Yeah, I, the, the Kingpin. I, I, I've been loving him for a while, man, for sure. And uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't realize he's he's in the in the cozy shirt, uh, uh club, dude. Uh, but yeah, dude, Kingpin, love him. Do you have any uh, last ones to close it up? Yeah, let me just hit you with two more. One I already mentioned that was Ronan. I actually do like Ronan. I think he needs some love. He just he feels like a crappier devil dinosaur. Although, I, as I said before, with Crystal and listen, sometimes I'm looking for a reason to run Baron and like those kind of underplayed cards. I think there is some value there. It just doesn't quite do what I want it to. I think it could use a little bit of extra power. I think Devil Dinosaur is much more reliable because of its play pattern. Because um, obviously you can control how you play down Devil Dinosaur, whereas your opponent can be incentivized to destroy your Ronin. Uh, but my last card, and by far one of my favorite cards I enjoy playing, even though it actually does pretty much suck, is going to be the three-cost Gambit. Um, there's very oh, few cards Gambit, in Marvel yeah. Snap. Yeah, there's very few games, uh, cards in Marvel Snap that are as exciting and fun to play as Gambit. It really does feel bad. I don't even know what you do with it. I don't even, is it just power you add to it? I'm not sure. Uh, but it does have like the potential to be completely game shattering. Like it is an immensely powerful effect. Uh, maybe it could be a card type of card that has more power, but it can only actually like shoot as often as it discards. So if you run out of cards in your hand, it can't actually shoot anymore. That could be a nice little nerf kind of change, but. Who am I? I'm no game dev, but I love Gambit. Yeah, dude, I uh, I feel like he's the perfect lottery card. Like he, I I don't mind him where he's at because he's like what he does is bonkers, and he doesn't even need a freaking card to do it. Uh, but three one discourages him. You don't really know what he could get rid of. Discard you do calculated discard now. Uh, so yeah, he's a bit he's a bit he's a bit odd man, but uh, Gambit's a fun one. And thank you guys so much for joining us this week on the Snapchat cozy. Your attitude, your shirts, and everything you bring to the table for this community is always appreciated. Thanks, buddy. I love you. Thanks, everybody, for uh, listening to, uh, you know, I think some passionate uh, conversation overall. We had fun subjects, uh, informative, and just wild. And so uh, you guys have a good one, and we'll see you next week.